good to be back here. I was here last year as well at the uh, Computer World, now Cascade. I'm trying to get into the rhythm of using the new name. Uh, event, um, fun to be here, short flight. For those that have no idea who I am, and I hope that's a lot of you, my name is Michel Baumann. We get a new title at Microsoft every year. Last year, they could hardly fit the title on the badge. This year, they didn't even, they didn't even bother to put titles on the badge. I'm currently the EMEA Solutions, but I still need to look at what the title is. EMEA Senior Solutions Specialist Lead for Microsoft Teams and Devices. What that means is the team and I, we go to about 118 countries in the world and we look at trends around work, trends around hybrid meetings, and how we can help customers to really thrive in this, in this new day and age. And I think I expect that I was the first one that's going to be, say, generative AI and GPT and Copilot, but Barry did beat me to it. There are two major trends in the world right now. Uh, one still very much about flexibility, hybrid work, work from home, call it whatever you want to call it. I think we just came out of the biggest worldwide work from home experiment. Only a couple of years ago, on a Monday morning, you were all saying there's no way we as a company can work from home. There's no way we can all migrate to Teams right now. Some of you even said we can't even move it to the cloud yet. And then on Tuesday, there was a press conference. And on Wednesday, everybody sat in their bedroom with their laptops on their lap on Teams working from home. And was that uh, all good? No, it definitely wasn't. I always use my next door neighbor as the example. Right? So my wife and I, we have four children. I take my kids to school every morning. Well, the youngest two, I take them to school. The oldest two, they get embarrassed when dad's right there with them at school. So I take the youngest two to school. And then after that, I walk the dog around 9 AM. And I would walk past my neighbor's house, and I could see my next door neighbor sitting down at his kitchen table, opening up his laptop. And in my mind, he just said, dear manager, I just started working. Like he clocked in. And then he would be on a meeting from 9 to 10, 10, 11, 11 to 12. And at 12, what would he do? Grab a sandwich. Would he enjoy his lunch? No. He would eat his sandwich while doing email. It's not healthy at all. Right? And then one, two, two, three. Then when I would walk my dog again at 5, I could see him standing up. He just checked out with his manager. Dear manager, I stopped working, closed his laptop, put it in the cupboard, grabbed the pants, and then started cooking. We came a long way from those times. What we see now is that more and more companies are stunned to provide ways to make it possible for people to work from home. Middle management and people managers, and not so much managing their people uh, based on, 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 uh, more based on trust and less based on control. Right? It's not so much about the time you put in, but it's more about the output. There are some struggles, though. We'll talk about it today, and we'll talk about the solution as well. The second trend, generative AI. Who in the room has never heard of Copilot? Raise your hands. Either everyone fell asleep. <coughs> Who has heard of Copilot? Just to be sure. Everyone in the room. Who has used it? Five people, right? We all can't wait for that 300 minimum license number to come down. I hear you. It's going to fundamentally change how we all work. And not just for the nerds in the room. I was looking around the room. I saw a couple of you. You always giggle. It's funny when I go to these shows. You always giggle. I'm a nerd as well, so hi. Uh, it's not just the nerds. It's, it's for everyone. Even somebody that has nothing with technology, even for them, Generative AI and Copilot will fundamentally change the way they work. And I know the team here got a full session to talk about Copilot as well. I think people ask me, is Michel, are we going back to the office? Well, the answer is definitely no. In the UK, only one third of the people are going back into the, uh, into the office. That is not changing. What people are saying, though, is that it's difficult to connect teams. People are starting to feel more and more distant from the company that they, uh, that they work for. And about 50% of the people are saying, I'm even afraid that AI is going to take my job. On that same note, 70% of the people are saying, but if I could automate some tasks through AI, I'll do it. Right? So there is a big opportunity out there. Who here, let me go back one slide. Who in the room, in your official job description, have doing email and being on meetings? By raise of hands. Six. OK. For everybody else, why are we spending two days a week on email and meetings? Two full days a week 
So the numbers are showing that we spend about nine hours a week on email, waste of time, and about seven and a half hours on meetings. And I think if I would ask many of you, you'd say seven and a half hours, that's just my Monday. Right? I think that's a complete waste of time. I think we need to rethink what a meeting really is. So we need to approach meetings more from a life cycle perspective. So there's a before the meeting, there's a during the meter, meeting, and after the meeting. Before the meeting, we inform each other. Right? So when I was uh, speaking to the team here about uh, coming to the show, and they invited me, I said, I would love to do it. Send me everything you want me to discuss before we head into the meeting. And then we booked the meeting, and the meeting was only 20 minutes. My calendar is open. If you want to have a meeting with me this week, next week, my calendar is open to you. We'll have a 20-minute meeting. Everyone will say 20 minutes is not enough, but you just send me all the information. So that's the before the meeting. During the meeting, we will not inform each other, we'll make decisions. Don't use meetings to inform each other. Use meetings to make actual decisions. Then you can start shortening your meetings. And then you follow up on meetings afterwards. And then people ask me, but Michel, if you're doing the before, during, and after, aren't you still spending an hour on those meetings? Well, the answer is no, and it's all about flow. So I just told you, I take my kids to school, I walk the dog, and then I start working. A colleague of mine, she loves to wake up at 5 in the morning. She catches up on, on emails and meetings from the day before, gets prepared for the day itself, goes to the gym for an hour, comes back, works until 3, and then she calls it a day. Her ideal flow is in the morning. And then on the follow-up piece. So last Monday, you were all in the weekly kickoff, at least 50% of you, in the weekly kickoff with 25 people. That meeting was completely useless. I'll tell you why. There's some studies that saying that if you have more than seven people on the meeting, with every person you add, the productivity goes down by 10%. So that 20 people meeting that you were on last week, useless. Or last Monday, useless. Also, at the end of the session, you had a couple of tasks you had to follow up on. Next Monday, you're going to be on that same meeting, and they're going to ask you, did you follow up on those tasks? I didn't have time. I was at the Cascade event this week, so I couldn't do it. Right? So nobody's following up on me this anyhow. Right? So again, rethink what a meeting is. Think in terms of life cycle. Make those meetings shorter. And if you can't make them 20 minutes, start with bringing them back from 60 to 45. And don't use those 15 to do something else work-related. Right? Step outside for a second. Hang your head out the window. Do something just for you, just to relax. Because as human beings, we do great at sprinting, but then we need to relax. Teams, especially in the UK, has grown immensely. And if you look at the worldwide teams number, 320 million users now, it's only in seven years. Teams rooms, triple digit growth for the past 10 months. Right, so it's, it's going really fast, and we're adding more and more applications to the, uh, to the Teams app as well. Who here has switched to the new Teams? Thank you. We heard your feedback, right? We understand that, that your workplace, it has to be fast, it has to be intuitive, it has to be super easy to use, and it has to be intelligent. And that's why last year we reimagined Teams from the ground up and released new Teams. So it's faster, it's simpler, and it's smarter. And I'll show you why. Two times as fast for common tasks, such as starting a meeting or starting a chat, and it's losing 50% resources. As much as I think that that is important, I also want to go back to flow, right? Again, go back to a meeting life cycle. There's this new app on the new Teams application, which is called the Meet app. The animation doesn't always want to start, so I'm looking at the screen. Will it start now? No. We'll try again. This is the new Meet application. If you haven't tried it yet, Try it out as soon as you get back behind the computer. Here you'll see the meetings that are up next, but you'll also see the meetings that were recent. You can see which meetings you missed. You can see which tasks have been assigned to whom. If there was a PowerPoint shared, the PowerPoint is there for you. You do not have to ask your colleagues, can you please share the PowerPoint slides with me? You also get access to the intelligent recap functionality in Teams Premium. Right, which gives you an overview of, of the meeting itself, which was recorded, the AI generated notes. If you have Copilot, you can bring Copilot in as well. And you can search by speaker or by topic. <coughs> right, so this is making life a lot more simpler. It's also making you smarter. Right, so last week I announced 
that new teams is going to be a new home for co-pilots. The way I use this every morning is I ask co-pilot, please help me prepare for my day. Add two or three bullets for every meeting that I'm in and add all the relevant documents. I hit enter. Ten seconds later, I'm fully prepared for all the meetings that I need to go to. Game changer. Co-pilot changing, saving me about 45 minutes to an hour every day. Every day. If you're a web user, Teams is now available for Edge and Chrome. It's also available for Windows and Mac. And if you are in VDI environments, we just released a public preview for new teams in VDI as well. It's, switching is easy. For those that haven't done it, you just toggle the switch. Everything you left in classic teams will be there in the new teams as well. So all your chats, meetings, documents, whatever you want, whatever you had, will be right there in the new teams application. Let's talk Copilot. Let's start with a video. And there should be audio. Never going down, don't wait for the drop. Stand still, that's the motto. Yeah. Brand new bands for the auto. Oh, foot to the ground, full throttle. Big energy for the night, like lotto. Y'all talk lots, never disquiet. Life like a Seinfeld plot. Mm. Ball full of songs, all of them bombs. Something like a minefield guy. Boom. Get it, get it, tickets running out quick. quick. Bet it, bet it, never get it out big. Said it, said it, never had a shout it. They said I couldn't ever do it, okay, how's it? Fit a week worth of work in a minute. Machine well oiled, you know how I stay efficient. To do list written, I do this different. Hold up, wait a minute, I ain't finished. Okay. Look, flows the same, the same, the same, the same now. Paved the way to snakes and fakes are chased out. Back to back to back, I changed the pace now. Had to stack the cash until the bank's out. Straight to the top, never going down, don't wait for the drop. So there's going to be a full co-pilot session, so I won't speak about it too much. Just want to explain the basics of it. Right, so we brought GPT to the Microsoft Cloud, meaning that everything you've set up in your organization in terms of uh, privacy, security, security, and compliancy is all in co-pilot as well. Right? If you want to prepare for co-pilot, start looking at your data right now. Right, look at sensitivity labels. Have you set those up properly, yes or no? Because Copilot will expose that for you. Right, then we combine that with the Microsoft Graph, which is the data layer underneath Microsoft Services. We combine that with the apps, and we combine that with the web. I'll just use two examples how I use Teams, uh, use Copilot the most. Let's start with Outlook. You've seen this. You get an email saying, at Michel Baumann, that's me, at Michel Baumann. Do you have the answer to this? And there's six emails underneath that question. So you have to go through all of them. It takes you a couple of minutes because there are four questions in the bottom and you have no idea which one has been answered. I ask Copilot to summarize and within a few seconds I know exactly what I have to do. So to me that's Outlook. In Teams, we have a, a group chat. I sincerely hope you're not using personal apps for your group chats at work, by the way. Right? One, it's a security issue if you ask me. Two, it's also a mental health issue. I'll explain why briefly. If you're sitting at home and you watched the Man U Galatasaray game last night, which I heard ended in 3-3. I'm not a football fan, but the guy that drove me here, he told me there was a game. If you, if you watch that game and you get a text message, and you're upset, right, because the goalie just, the ball just went through his hands and just scored the goal. I heard that's what happened. Don't want to be Debbie Downer here, but... Um, uh, you get upset, you get a text, you think it's from your friend, but it's actually from your boss saying, hey, can you do X, Y, and Z tomorrow? That's the last thing you want. Right? So move that group chat into Teams or whatever productivity app you're using. Don't use your personal apps to do these type of communication. But we have a, the story I was about to tell, we have a group chat with 500 of the most intelligent Teams rooms experts in the world across time zones. So what I do every day is I go into that group chat and I ask Copilot, create me a table with all the questions asked and all the answers given. And I immediately have an overview. I don't take notes in meetings anymore. I let AI handle that for me. There are two things I would love to highlight, which I'm sure the other speaker probably won't be talking about, because the question is, that I get is, Michelle, I want to stay in control, and how can we ensure that people in AI work together as a team? Because I think that's when it's, when it's most powerful. Last week at Ignite, we announced uh, visualize spoken IDs with Copilot in whiteboards. So how does that work? Well, here you see a meeting, 
and you're about to see uh, Copilot in action. So we're going to ask Copilot to please summarize the meeting for us. So we go to the button here. Normally, this is a fake demo where I get behind the thing and act as if it's real. Uh, summarize, uh, uh, summarize the idea in the meeting and now visualize it in whiteboards. You click that button, whiteboards opens, and all the stuff you talked about is right there in the whiteboard. You can collaborate together. You can bring in all kinds of components. If you've been using loop components, you can bring the loop components into that whiteboard as well. So that's the first one. The second one is Copilot in collaborative notes. I have somebody on my team, and she's a great note taker. But sometimes she gets a little bit carried away, and she can't really focus on what's happening in the meeting. So this is what we're about to do. When you click the notes button, and hopefully you've been using this because you've take, been taking notes, right? No? OK, today's the day to start. Uh, you can start taking notes, right? But then at some point, it's funny that the people up front started taking notes now. Uh, uh, somewhere midway through the conversation, you'd be like, oh, Miguel said something super interesting, but I didn't really catch it. Ask Copilot to catch it for you, and then put it in those meeting notes for you. Right? Again, this is going to be a game changer to how we all work. We just saw that only 33% of the people are going back to the office in the UK. And studies have shown, that's our own work trend index, is showing that in two out of three meetings, you'll have at least one virtual participant, which means we need to rethink what the office really is. I'm on an EMEA team. I don't have a lot of peers in, in my local office. So I don't really go to the office because I don't have a reason to go to the office. So you need to start giving people a reason to go into the office. And it's no longer just coffee. At the same time, you also need to think about how can we make sure everybody stays connected. Early in the deck, we saw how people feel disconnected from the company they work for and how leaders struggle to keep everything, everybody with the same company mindset that you have. Let's talk a little bit about Microsoft Mesh and about uh, Microsoft Teams Rooms. We'll start with Mesh and we'll start with a video. So it might not be the best thing to say right now, but, but I'll admit, first time I saw this, I was like, is this Sims from 10 years ago? Where are the legs? <laughs> right? Trust me, I felt the same way. But I started using it. Right? And we have these things called immersive spaces. Now, for all our social gatherings, uh, onboarding of new employees, and our all hands we use mesh immersive spaces. You see that little pink bubble? We call it the icebreaker bubble. There's a question on it. You can go there together and then answer the question that's in the, uh, that's in the bubble. You can even step out of the place where everybody's holding the meeting and have a side conversation. You can play games in this as well, right? So it is kind of like Sims. Uh, play games here as well. You can even roast marshmallows and then have a one-to-one -one conversation with someone while everybody else is in the other room. If you haven't tried this with your team, you have a team that doesn't often see each other, start using it. For those Monday morning meetings that I just talked about, start using immersive spaces as soon as it's available. Right? So avatars are available now in both classic teams and in new teams. And immersive spaces and custom immersive spaces, which is going to be even more interesting, going to be available in January of 2024. Let's talk hybrid meetings. I was here last year, I spoke a lot about rooms, and I'll, I, I brought some of those same slides just to bring home the point again. If you want, if you want to run a, 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 a hybrid meeting where everybody feels included, there are three things that are super important. One, hear and be heard. Audio needs to be crisp. If it isn't, you have an issue. Two, see and be seen. Now, that's not about having an 8K video feed. 
you don't want to see me in 8K on a meeting, anyhow. And I'm looking in the crowd. I don't want to see most of you in 8K neither. I appreciate you all, but no. You don't want to see people in 8K. But see and be seen is about picking up nonverbal communication. 80 to 90% of all of our communication is nonverbal. So just that simple nod, that twitch, whatever happens in somebody's face, that's something you want to pick up in those hybrid meetings. And then the third one is being able to collaborate. And only when you can tick these three boxes, that's when you'll drive through immersive and inclusive meetings. And we understand that your journey towards Microsoft Teams rooms might take some time. You might want to start with a bring your own device scenario. By the way, only 15% of meeting rooms are currently equipped with video. Right, so it's time to make that change now because people are not coming back to the office. BYOD is not the ideal scenario. I'll use two, I'll explain through two little stories. One from a user perspective. You've been here. You walk into that office space or into that meeting room with your laptop. The table's right there and there's this little bundle of cables. Now somebody has to give up their laptop. Nobody wants to do that. Right? All of a sudden, your battery is almost dead. You didn't bring an adapter. There's always a reason why nobody wants to share their laptop. Finally, somebody says, you know what? Use mine. And then they start to find the right cable. Fun fact, two laptops break every year because somebody's trying to push an HDMI cable into a USB port. That happens in organizations, which is crazy. So that's the user scenario, not ideal. From an IT perspective, when I speak to customers, and the feedback that I get from Cascade, two out of two, Cascade is that when they speak to customers and they ask, how many meeting rooms do you have? You often don't really have the answer. I have approximately an X amount of rooms. So what kind of devices do you have? Well, you probably know that answer because you ordered them. Are they up to date? I don't know. Are they working? Well, there was a user the other day that plugged an HDMI cable into a USB port. Now, are they still there? Many of you don't have the answer. Go on, what's your equivalent of eBay? Craigslist? eBay, use eBay here? Okay, oh well. Uh, uh, so go to eBay tonight, right? And then search for Logitech Brio or Logitech E920. You'll find a bunch of them on eBay. Not because people are not working from home anymore, but because people are stealing them from the office and taking them home. So not ideal scenario. So it's a journey, and we understand it's a journey from a bring your own device scenario to the native Teams room. So we did make the, the BYOD, as we call it, rooms a lot better. Two weeks ago at Ignite, we announced a new experience for bring your own meetings. Now you can simply connect the cable to your laptop if you can figure out which port and which cable. Uh, and then the meeting will automatically be broadcasted to the front of room display. So no longer will you share your personal screen. You don't have to kind of figure out if you need to go into shared mode or duplicate mode, none of that anymore. The new Teams app will automatically do this for you. So you'll see your meeting right there. And then if you want to continue to use PowerPoint Live or do other stuff on your main display or on your laptop, you still can. So we changed that. So that's going to make the experience a lot better. Also, I'll go back one slide for all of, all of you in IT. You can now also get insights on those rooms. You need a shared device license. Uh, get insights on those rooms as well. Right? So you can start measuring how often those rooms are being used and if they're healthy, yes or no. But the way to go is most definitely still a native Teams room. We certify these devices. And we're hard on our OEMs when it comes to certification. Right? Walk up to the good folks at NEAT who are a very valued partner of us. Not sure if they're in the room now, but if so, Graham, you owe me a NEAT center. Um, uh, we are very strict when it comes to our OEMs. There's a 170-page spec that they have to live up to. And as soon as, as partners like Neat uh, want to build or release a new device that runs Microsoft Teams Rooms, they have to send it to one of our labs. We test it. And once it goes through all the tests, that's when they get the stamp of approval. If not, we'll send them back and they need to fix it. Right? So don't just take any camera. Always go with a team certified device. Now look at your room. Right, it's the large room, smart room, what kind of camera do you need? Maybe I need a board, like a collaboration board. Let's talk briefly in my last, last five minutes about Service Hub. Any Service Hub users in the room? A couple. Oh, I see. Okay, good stuff. Um, uh, the Service Hub 3 is now the only Team Zooms on Windows device that's out there. What I like is the fact that you can turn this around in portrait mode, and now you can see that person almost in life-size 
right there with you, uh, with you in, the, uh, in the meeting. There are three ways to get this, uh, get this new experience. To get this new experience, uh, one, uh, upgrade, buy an upgrade pack for the users that we have on, on Service Hub. Two is wait for the software upgrade once it becomes available later last year, but you'll be dealing with older hardware. Or, of course, you buy a new service. Who was here last year when I spoke about Front Row? Okay, a couple of people knew. So I explained the concept of Front Row. This is unique to Teams Rooms. This isn't in the regular app, right? This is only in the Teams Rooms application. The videos are on the bottom. The cameras are also on the bottom. It's important. Go back to those three points in the Microsoft vision around hybrid. See and be seen is important. So when you get off eBay tonight, I'm going to give you a full list. When you come off eBay tonight, open your favorite streaming service or, or watch the rerun of yesterday's game. Who scored a goal for Menu? Anybody know? No one? Was it that bad? Okay, then I'll use the only football player that I know, Messi. Right before Messi is about to take the free kick, they'll always film his eyes because that's where the emotion is. If you go to your favorite streaming platform and watch your favorite series or favorite movie, Right? They'll, if they want you to be, be part of that scene, they'll always film the eyes. If they don't want you to be a participant in the scene, but a spectator, they'll film you from afar or above. So, going back to the meeting room, if you have your, your camera on top of your display, the user dialing in will be flying over that audience like they're in a drone. They will, they will always be a spectator, they will never be a participant. You need to make sure that they're a participant. Right? So that's why you need to place your cameras underneath your displays and use this front row layout. We're adding many things to this. One is spatial audio. You might know this from your home stereo audio setup. What we do is we leverage the left and right channel of a stereo speaker. Why is this important? If I'm on a meeting, I'm gonna stand in front of the screen. If I'm in a meeting and somebody on the left is speaking, this is my left, but the audio comes from the middle, it's very unnatural to my brain. It leads to meeting fatigue. So with spatial audio, if somebody from the left is speaking, the audio will come from the left, and if somebody from the right is speaking, the audio will come from the right. This happens in real life. When you go out later and you go to the, uh, to the neat booth and all the other booths that are there, you'll have a one-to-one -one conversation with Graham Walsh, and even though there's a lot of noise around you, you can focus on the conversation that's being held. That's because of the spatial audio technology and how our brains and ears work. So we removed all the backgrounds from everybody on the uh, front row to make them pop out any more, uh, even more. And if there's any noise in that room that has nothing to do with the meeting itself, we'll filter that out as well. But then what you want is you, we're looking into a meeting room right now. Ideally, you want these four people to be in their own frame. Now, if you have a camera that has no intelligence on board, we'll do this for you in the Microsoft Cloud. Right? So we'll make sure that everybody gets their own little video frame. We call this IntelliFrame. If you do have a camera that has the intelligence on board, we'll do through multi-stream video. We'll also use uh, facial recognition and voice recognition. So we can see here that Serena is speaking and she's drawn on the whiteboard. We also see that Abigail, Joseph, and Corey are in this meeting. Now, if you start using Copilot, you can ask questions about what happened in that meeting and they'll let you know Serena Abigail said X, Y, and Z. Formally, you would only see this was said in meeting room one. So that brings us full circle. I'll end with this quote. People ask me all the time, Michel, is AI gonna replace us? The answer is no. AI won't replace you. But somebody using AI better than you, they might. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Thank you.